family, please. You may be seated. In dying, Christ destroyed our death. In rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Gerard Theodore Allard put on Christ, so in Christ may he be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed to us. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we have gathered here today, and when I say here, I mean in this sanctuary, but also wherever people are tuning in, watching on the Facebook live stream. We've gathered together to do two things. First, to remember and celebrate the life of Jerry Allard, a good man who lived a good life. And second, to remember and to celebrate God's love, grace, and mercy, which have enabled him to receive eternal life and glory. But in the midst of our celebration, we acknowledge our human loss and our grief over losing someone we love and care about deeply. And so we ask God to grant us his grace, that in our pain we may find comfort, in our sorrow, hope, in our grief, joy, and in death, resurrection. I invite you to pray with me. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you now, and especially, we praise you for Jerry Allard, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these here, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them, and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, a home not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For thousands of years, the people of God have found comfort in the Word of God that we now know as the 23rd Psalm. We printed the words on the back of your bulletin, so I'm going to invite you to read with me these words of comfort and assurance. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. come to a portion in the service that I call a time of reflection. It's a time for people to share memories, stories, comments about Jerry. And I want to start with a video from Reverend Bill Haddock. Uh, Bill, of course, was the pastor here for many years. And I called him and invited him to come and join us today. And he said he would love to, but he has his charge conference today. Uh, you Methodists know what I'm talking about. So, uh, Bill, to accommodate us and his busy schedule, has uh, prepared a little video, and we're hoping that our uh, computer system is not going to give us any problems. So, Ken? Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been asked to say a few words about Jerry Allard. The truth is, I could talk a long time about Jerry. He was a real active member of Riceboro United Methodist Church. 
he and his wife Alma supported me and loved me through thick and thin. And Jerry in particular was a real friend. Uh, he helped uh, do some warm projects, some plumbing projects here and there. Um, he went to Israel with me and Alma and Jean and Ernie and Judy and and he took me fishing. In fact, he tried to teach me how to fish. That didn't go over too well. Uh, he could catch fish and Mike could catch fish, but I'm still trying to learn how to catch fish. And one day, Jerry saw me with a guitar. We were going to have guitar lessons at the church. And he came back to where I was and he said, I want to see how you put your hands on the guitar. And I did that and he moved them around different ways and looked at me and just kind of walked away. I realized that he didn't have to say anything, but I was not going to learn how to play the guitar. Jerry was really, really willing to do anything that I asked, that anybody else asked, and I couldn't have a better friend. I know that he's been suffering some recently, and I know he's at home with the Lord, and we can give thanks for that. I do want to share with you one thing that happened. Some time ago, my son and daughter-in-law decided that they were going to go to live in Lafayette, Louisiana. For Jean and me, it was kind of sudden. It happened very quickly uh, between the time we were notified and the time they moved. And I was telling someone about what was going on and Jerry overheard the fact that I was going to have to drive a truck down to Louisiana. And he immediately piped up and said, I'm going with you. And of course, I couldn't refuse that offer. So he and I ended up driving a truck down, uh, pulling a car all the way to Lafayette, Louisiana, and then riding back together uh, in my car. The reason why I want to share this story with you is because of what happened in Lafayette. We went to dinner as soon as we had gotten the truck unloaded. And by the way, Jerry was lifting things that he shouldn't have been lifting. I, I knew all about his leg and everything else, and, and yet uh, he wouldn't stand by. He wanted to be involved. And so anyhow, we went to dinner and sat down and I immediately started crying uh, because I realized in just a little while uh, my son and daughter-in-law were going to be in Lafayette and we were not. And so I stepped outside the restaurant and cried some more and uh, soon uh, Jerry came out and said, you know, it's going to be all right. He says, I moved a lot when I was in the military. And I saw Alma cry. And I saw other people cry that were our friends. But it always worked out. I can't tell you what that meant to me at that time. Oh, I cried some more. Don't worry about that. And, and yet, I knew that it was going to be all right, and it did, and it was all right. 
Now Jerry is taking a different kind of journey. One that he has to do alone and we all have to do alone. Uh, crossing uh, that barrier between life and death and there's so much that we don't know. But I know it's going to be all right for Jerry because he knew the Lord and he knew what was on the other side of that barrier that we call death. He knew that there was a time coming when he would have a good body again, that uh, he would have uh, the opportunity of being in the very presence of Jesus, of seeing Jesus face to face, and being with those who have gone on to be with the Lord previously. So even though I've done my share of crying after I've heard about Jerry's death, I choose to celebrate because somewhere in the back of my mind, I've heard Jerry say once again, it's gonna be all right. Alma and family, and indeed the whole church family, Jean and I send our love. Uh, we truly loved and appreciated Jerry and Alma. And we ask God's blessing upon you all. And I just wanna say, it's gonna be all right. I'd like to invite anyone else who would like to make uh, some brief comments to come up here. Usually we just have you stand where you are, uh, but since we are streaming the service, uh, our tech up there said that they, you needed to come up here to the microphone because we may be able to hear you in here, but they're not gonna hear you out there. So I believe, Ernie, you were gonna say a few words. I will try my best to get through this without breaking down. Jerry has been the biggest and best friend I think I've ever had. He was just something special about him. Not only did he love his family, but he loved his God. He loved him more than anything. I'll never forget when I was called to go into the ministry and I accepted the position I'm in now as the pastor of Trinity United Methodist Church in Kelly, North Carolina. The first thing that Jerry said to me is, I'm going to be your associate. I'm going to be there when you can't. And he was. He was there to support us. And the most memorable service I had to remember of Jerry was on our 50th wedding anniversary when he came out and he performed the, helped us to renew our wedding vows. You see, Jerry was more than just a friend. He was more than just a pastor and I believe that I was closer to Jerry than I am to my own brothers. And I'll make this commitment to Alma that as long as I'm alive, I will help you in any way I can. We love you, Alma. We love Jerry. And I wish, I wish we would have had more time together. But I do know one thing for a fact. I believe in what Jesus promised us and what Jesus said. And I know that one day I'll sit at the throne at the foot of Jesus and I'll praise God with Jerry again. And I'm sorry I'm crying, but this is very emotional for me because Jerry is, it was, my best friend. I've got other friends that are just as good as Jerry. Two of them are sitting next to my wife. But Jerry and I had a special bond. 
And he'll always be the associate pastor at Kelly and Trinity United Methodist Church in Kelly. Even nobody appointed him, nobody asked him to do that. But he appointed himself as my associate. I don't think I'll ever forget that. He was a blessing to me. I got to tell you one other thing he did. When I took the church over there, Jerry brought me all these notebooks of his sermons. And he says, I don't expect you to preach these, but they might help you in preparing your sermons. Now, I don't know if he was trying to tell me, David, that I needed to be better at my speaking, but he wanted to help me. And it was Jerry's way of offering me that help. He was a big support to me, and he will be truly missed. I could probably go on for two or three more hours about things that Jerry did for us, but I think I better leave it right there. And I know that one day I'll sit with Jerry at the foot of Jesus, and all of us will praise God together. Thank you for allowing me this time. Would someone else like to come up and share? Yes? I am, um, okay, Whew. all right, all right. I am Jerry's youngest um, granddaughter. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Um, I'm sorry. Um, Grandpa Jerry was one of the goofiest guys. <laughs> I remember always asking him. He did like the best Donald Duck impression you would ever hear. I remember when growing up, like every dinner, every time I'd see him, I'd say, hey, Grandpa, can you do the Donald Duck impression? I remember getting so many videos of it and laughing at them with him. Um, and then if you saw some of the photos, I was a girl laying down next to him with his hat on my head. Um, <laughs> Grandpa was always a fighter, and when you think he was going down, he would get right back up, and he was also really helpful. And so when there are things that he shouldn't be doing, like lifting things up or just walking around all the time, he still did it, and we had to tell him to sit down and rest because he doesn't need to be moving so much. <laughs> um, and uh, Grandpa, who was Jerry, he was just, he just brought so much life to the table. Um, I could sit down and listen to his stories all the time, and even if he said them multiple times, I'd want to hear it again and again because his life was just so fascinating. Um, and uh, I know he's at a better place, even though it's so hard. Um, but heaven just earned another angel, and he will always be loved and missed. Hey everybody, um, I'm Austin, one of uh, grandfather's grandsons, and um, I just want to start off saying thank you everyone for coming out, showing support to us and family, and um, I know uh, I could go on like everyone else could with stories, but one, one story in particular always sticks out to me when we were uh, riding the jet ski, me, my sister, and uh, Grandpa on a, on a two-seater jet ski that should only be two people. We fit three of them on there. And hey, Brooke, I know you're watching. But um, as soon as we came in to uh, try to put it on the trailer, we flipped it. And when we flipped that jet ski, I ran. I mean, I swam. I didn't run. I couldn't run. 
swam as hard as I could to the shore. And uh, Grandpa's uh, shoes, his diabetic shoes that he needed, started to float away. And he told Brooke to go get those, and he'll try to flip it back. But one thing's for sure, that man will fight, and he'll fight till he's done. And I know right now he's in his mansion. Every time he came home for after his surgery, he said, well, guess my mansion's not ready yet. And I uh, guess it's not ready yet. But it's ready, and he's up there right now. And uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out. Hi, my name is Judy, and I just want to say Jerry was a dear friend. I've known him for quite a while, and the one thing I liked best about him in the last few months was being able to sit with him and have some real deep conversations. I learned a lot about the man inside and not just what you saw on the outside, but I saw the man who had gone through many wars and struggles, but finally come into a place of rest. He was a good man. He was deep. He had many wars. He loved God, he loved his family, and he loved his country. But as all good soldiers, you need a comrade to keep fighting. And Jerry had that in Alma. She kept him going. And when the fight got tough, she was there. She never gave up any more than he gave up on life. Although he had bad health problems, he kept fighting. And he fought courageously to the end. I'm thankful for the times that we had to share and I'll always remember him looking for that silly alligator <laughs> and sneaking out to get those jelly donuts. He was a friend, and it was an honor to know him. And all I can say is, good going, Jer. Good fight to the end. You made it. Good morning. Um, I'm Evan Lucas, and I was a family friend. Um, before I read what I wrote down, um, this was a man of courage, a man of compassion, and a man of conviction. Oh, that we could have more men like Jerry Allard in this country today, men who stand up for this, this country, who fought, who loved, who served. He's an, an inspiration and a role model to me. But when I think of Jerry, I think of the phrases he used to say like, are you kidding me? And how he would always greet everyone. He never met a stranger, no matter who it was, by saying, hey, my friend. Hey, my friend. I think of the way he loved life. And as has been mentioned, he always loved to find a joke somewhere or, or looking. he looked for a way to make even everyday moments more fun. Um, and he really enjoyed the simple pleasures of going to the swimming pool, which we did often, and riding around on his uh, cart, and um, sitting on the front porch and just watching the world go by. That was life and that was fun for Jerry. Um, I often would ride my bike to his home in the afternoons and would sit with him on the porch. And recently, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a secret that he was um, getting on in years and, you know, his time was growing short. And so I asked him, I said, Jerry, what would you like to be remembered for? what would you like to be your legacy? And he said three things. First, for his military service, for all the men and women he trained and served with in both the Navy and the Army. Second, he said for the work he did as a pastor and a chaplain, 
specifically his work at New Hanover Regional Medical Center to pray with so many who were sick, dying, and discouraged. And finally, he wanted to be remembered for raising his four children, who he said all had turned out well and had tremendous opportunities and good lives. I know he was proud of his service to family, God, and country, and it truly shaped who he is. And we all have the same opportunity to accept Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord like Jerry and surrender to his will for our lives and claim what he did for us at the cross. And we too, like Jerry, can experience what he did that Saturday afternoon when Jesus Christ, the creator and Lord of the universe, said, hey, my friend, come on in. Enter into the joy of your master. Anyone else? Well, thank you all for sharing. Uh, those personal comments, memories, stories are, are so important and so comforting to the family. I'd like to share a few verses of scripture with you from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and the hearing of his word this morning. I got to know Jerry pretty well myself over the last almost five years that I've served as the pastor here at Wrightsburg United Methodist Church. He was one of the first people that I met when I came here. And I suppose that was because he was so involved in the life of the church and, and really he was always here. He sang in the choir, he served on various committees, and as you have already heard others say, he was one of those people who was always willing to help out wherever and however he could. And I quickly realized that Jerry was a man who was full of life and energy, so enthusiastic about everything, so excited about everything. And I always noticed that he had a smile on his face, a smile on his face and and kind of had a little bit of a twinkle in his eye. It was kind of like he knew something that you didn't know, and he wasn't going to tell you. And I think it's fair to say that uh, Jerry was not what we would call shy or quiet. Uh, usually, if he was around, you knew it. He, he wasn't going to blend into, you know, the walls or anything. And it was because he was just so full of life. I really appreciated Jerry's sense of humor. Yes, he, he often had a funny story to tell. He often had some comment to make that just kind of caught you off guard. It's like, huh? But a couple of years ago, he started calling me Uncle David. <laughs> Uncle David, I have no idea why. He never offered an explanation. I never asked for one. I figured it wouldn't do any good. He would just call me Uncle Dave and just sit back and grin. Alma told me that she asked him one time, why did he call his pastor Uncle David? And Jerry said, well, I've never had an Uncle David. <laughs> and I guess that's probably about as good of an explanation as we could expect from Jerry. So I just played along. I called him my nephew, and then I promoted him to my favorite nephew. And so whenever we saw each other, he'd say, hello, Uncle David. I'd say, how's my favorite nephew? And he would just grin, and we would just have a little fun with it. That was Jerry. It didn't take anything really big, anything really elaborate. Like Evan said, he, he got a lot of joy out of some of the simplest things. 
And over the last few years, I, I witnessed the side of Jerry that some of you, most of you know about, and some of you who came up here and shared uh, mention. And that is that Jerry was a fighter. He was a fighter. We all saw Jerry's health decline. It, it seemed that he started to have one health problem after another. And of course, including that was his having to undergo dialysis three times a week. But throughout all of those struggles, he never gave up. He was all, always ready to, to take on the next surgery, the next treatment, whatever it was. He was a true fighter. And I'm convinced that it was because of his faith. It was because of that strong faith that he had that, that gave him the strength to get through so many tough times, always with a smile on his face and his sense of humor intact. It was his faith that kept him going when so many other people would have just given up. It was his faith that kept him going and gave him the courage to face each day whatever was waiting for him. And I can say that Jerry's love of the Lord and his faith, well, they're the most important things that we can say about Jerry today. Yeah, we can tell good stories, we can share good memories, and those are important. But the fact that Jerry had that faith, well, that really changes everything today. That's because if all we could do today was share stories and memories about Jerry and talk about what a good man he was, well, then this would be a sad day indeed. That's because all we would be talking about was the Jerry who was and who is now gone. But because Jerry loved the Lord, because Jerry had put his faith in Jesus Christ and accepted him as his Lord and Savior, we can also talk about and celebrate the Jerry who is. The Jerry who lives on, not just in our hearts, not just in our minds and in our memories, but who lives on in that place that Jesus said he went to prepare for us. That mansion that Laurie sang so beautifully about earlier. And let's be clear, folks, Jerry doesn't live on because he was a good person. We don't earn eternal life by being good or doing nice things for others or even being in service to the church. We can't. It's impossible. We receive eternal life as a gift from God when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and put our whole trust in him. And we all know that Jerry had done that, not just because he said he had, that's important, but because he showed it in the way that he lived his life, the way that he treated others, the way that he served and as I said, the fact that Jerry loved Jesus and had put his faith in him allows us to celebrate the Jerry who is. It means that today in the midst of our grief, in the midst of our sorrow, yes, we can rejoice. We can celebrate in the knowledge that Jerry isn't really dead. Yes, his earthly body has ceased to function as all earthly bodies will eventually do. But we who believe in Jesus Christ know that death does not have the final word for us. Death is not the end. Rather, it is only a transition into a new life, a glorious new life. We believe, we claim the promises that Jesus made in the scripture I shared a little while ago, that whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And not only do we know that Jerry lives on, we rejoice in knowing that he is in a place so beautiful, so glorious, we can't really comprehend it. We simply call it heaven. We don't fully understand heaven, we can't. But we know it is a place of perfect beauty, is a place where he is united with family and friends who have gone on before him in the faith. And I don't know if they have beaches and fishing in heaven, but why not? But the most important thing is that Jerry is in the presence of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died so that he might have eternal life and glory. And for those of us who die in the faith, yes, we will see him again. As I said and others have said, Jerry was a fighter.
strengthened by his faith in God. We prayed often for healing of whatever he was battling at the time. And so often, really time after time, God heard and answered those prayers, keeping him going for as long as he did. And I remember Jerry telling me one time that he believed God was going to heal his kidneys and allow him to stop or at least cut back on the dialysis. But that was not God's will. And it was not God's will that Jerry be healed from the last major stroke that he suffered, although we certainly prayed for physical healing. But we must remember that sometimes God heals our earthly bodies, but through Christ he offers all of us the ultimate healing in the form of a new body when this earthly body is done. Praise God that Jerry has received that ultimate healing. We don't know exactly what Jerry's new body looks like, but we know it's perfect in every way. We know that he is no longer experiencing any pain or suffering. He no longer needs dialysis. He no longer has any cancer cells in his body. He no longer has any trouble getting around. Can you just imagine him dancing around now? He has been fully healed and fully restored in every possible way. Even his legs that gave him so much trouble for so long have been completely restored. And unlike these earthly bodies that we are trapped in, his new body will never get sick, never get tired, and never wear out. And what a joy and comfort it is for us to know that Jerry has been fully healed and restored and is no longer suffering. As I said earlier, we all watched his health decline over the last few years, and, and it was hard to watch. Especially when you see someone who is so full of life and has been so active in so many ways to, to see them forced to slow down. It's difficult to watch. But when I saw him in the hospital after his recent stroke, well, that just broke my heart. He was unable to communicate. He was in obvious distress. And that sparkle that I said was always in his eyes, it had faded. I believe that God taking Jerry as he did, when he did, ending his suffering, and granting him the ultimate healing was an act of mercy and kindness by a God who is merciful and kind. So today and in the days to come, yes, we grieve the loss of Jerry Allard. He will be missed by so many, especially his best friend and wife of so many years, Alma. And let's remember, it's natural to grieve the loss of a loved one. That's what we do when we lose someone near and dear to us. That's the way that God designed us. And the grief that we feel is actually a reflection of how much we love them, how much they meant to us, and how much we miss them. But in the midst of our sorrow, let us also praise God and rejoice for the victory that was won by Jesus Christ, the victory of eternal life, the victory that Jerry claimed as his own through his faith in Christ. So yes, we grieve. But as Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, we do not grieve as others do who have no hope. Our hope, like Jerry's hope, is Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. I invite you to pray with me. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our time of need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. And to all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, we trust you. And to you, with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive Jerry into the arms of your mercy 
into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints of light. God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this day, for the gift of joy and days of health and strength, and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and for friends and for our baptism and place in your church with all who have faithfully lived and died. And above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
On behalf of Alma and the family, I want to thank you all for joining us here today, both here in the sanctuary and online, for this celebration of Jerry's life and God's goodness. And even though many of you could not be here with us in the sanctuary, your virtual presence is noted, and it is such a blessing and is so much appreciated. For those who are here, uh, we're offering lunch outside behind the church. Uh, we are making every effort to keep things as uh, safe as possible in the midst of this pandemic. So the meals have been uh, prepared. They're in takeout containers, and there are tables set out uh, up outside under our shelter. And so you're invited to uh, just go out this back door and through the uh, fellowship hall and uh, get your meal. And if you are more comfortable going somewhere else to eat it, that is fine. But we do want to offer that for you uh, just, to, just to celebrate, once again, uh, Jerry's life and God's goodness. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds of the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Thank you. 